Mark from Interrupt again. Television. This is actually our third attempt to do this. We're having massive technical problems. Hopefully these guys won't be having later on. We say after 28 years away from the United Kingdom. 28? Christ, it's going up all the time. The 1989 was the last time you were here. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm not, I'm not going to go. After a, a lifetime right. for many people. Kicks are back and please say Steve Whiteman's here. Great I to see am. You back in the UK. <laughs> I'm Thank here. You so much. Peace, love, y'all. And uh, you, you, you were massive in the late 80s, early 90s, and then you quietly. I don't know about massive, but we. we, we you did pretty big in the States. Yeah, we, we broke pretty good um, in like 1989 with Blow My Fuse and carried over a little bit with Hot Water. But then the whole scene had changed, the party had changed, the genre of, of appeal had changed. Mm -hmm. So we went away in 95, thinking it was overdone, and went out to do other projects on our own. And little by little, we, we started getting interest in bringing the band back together, just in our little comfort zone in Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. uh, Pennsylvania, Maryland, West Virginia, and we would do like eight shows a year. And we were happy doing that, you know, it was a little extra money, but everybody was sort of still doing their own thing. Mm -hmm. And I got a call from an agent. Who it just called me out of the blue and said, um, I can book you guys around the country if you give me a chance. And I just laughed at him. And I thought, you know, we're dead, done, over. And he said, just give me a chance. And I said, and it took him a couple days to, to talk me into it because I was really happy with where I was mm -hmm. in life. I had kids growing up. Um, I was a family man. I was home all the time. I was done with the travel and all that. So it took a little coaxing to get me to come back out. But he did. And his first gig that he booked us with was Rocklahoma which was this massive festival in the U.S. And, mm -hmm. and like 20,000 people turned out in the shit. And we were like, really? Yeah, you're still relevant. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and it opened all of our eyes. And we said, okay, Mr. Agent, do, do your thing. And little by little, he kept getting more and more and more shows. So we're up to like 40 shows a year now. And so it's been a long time since we've been back in, in the UK. Right, too long. Uh, too long. You never really broke in the UK. Right. But you've uh, you, you the cult following. As Apparently. It's by, as it's proven by the, the first time you come back in so long, you're headlining a festival. Yeah. It's, I wouldn't call it's not massive. But right, exactly. Yeah. It's not the biggest festival in the world, but it's still it's a festival and it's nice and then, and I hear nothing but good things about it. So, you know, we're... we're, um, we're proud as hell to be here and headline on a Friday night. So we just, you know, hopefully we can stir up some dirt and get people to notice us again and go, hey, this goddamn kicks band's pretty goddamn good. <laughs> well, I'm certainly looking forward to it because I always thought back in the day, kicks were one goddamn shit up band. And I know several friends are coming especially just for the show tonight. I see people from Norway, from Italy, from Spain say, we're, we came to see you guys. Uh, now, yeah, we're trying to buy you. Sounds good. Yeah, no, they, they all really came to see Vince Snape. Yeah, right. Happy <laughs> 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 turns off. <laughs> right. <laughs> So you took, a, you took a bit of a break in 95, you came back around about 2000 and the other 2003, road. 2004. Mm -hmm. And uh, then in 2014, all of a sudden a brand new Kicks album appeared. Yeah. After 19 years, after that, show business. That came movement. about, we, um, we were approached by Frontiers Records. Actually, we had made a live DVD that we shot in Baltimore, and we were so proud of it, we wanted to get some distribution to get it out. Frontiers was signing everybody and anything, so we thought, let them get it, get their hands on it and, and, and distribute it. They said, Un under one condition, we want a new studio album. And we're like, mm, do we really care about wanting a studio album? And then uh, it, got, it got us percolating. You know, it's like, mm. well, yeah, maybe the fans will like new music. So we started working on a new album. And then it came around that uh, we weren't real happy with the way things were going with Frontier. So we got out of that deal and we signed with Loud and Proud Records. And then we put out the record. And I don't know how well it did. I don't know. You know, no, nobody buys new music anymore. But you put it out for the hardcore fans. And then you go out and you play a couple new tracks when you play live. And hopefully they get over. But um, it makes us feel good creatively. It makes us feel good as, as musicians and artists. And for the first time in our lives, we actually all contributed on this record. So it, it was it was a lot of fun to make and we were proud of it. And that's you know, it, like I said, I don't I mean it sold maybe twenty, thirty thousand, if that, which is crap. You know? <laughs> Compare in Compared to what it used thing. to be, right. yeah. And then and these days of free dying those where people just your Everybody shit just takes it, yeah. yeah. So I mean you two just gives it away because they're not gonna people go buy it anyway, so they just give it away. So that's just what the fans will listen to it, so they won't walk out during your show going, I don't know that one, let's go get a beer. <laughs> no, they're not going to do that. If we had a 28 years to see you now, again. Now, during a drum solo, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's 19 years between albums. 
Uh, are you any plans for it? Are you going to make us wait that long again? No, no, no. We're, 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 we're talking about it again. I, we've all been writing. It's been about three years. We're in no hurry, you know, when when everybody's schedule opens up. Brian's really uh, busy with the band Rhino Bucket. He goes out and does a lot of things with them. Um, everybody keeps kind of busy, so whenever we can get the time our, in our schedule, we can get together and, and put our heads together and li listen to the music that's been written. And then if, if we feel like we've got some good material, we'll lay down some tracks because our bass player has a studio in his house. Pretty damn convenient. Mm -hmm. Keeps the cost down. Yes. <laughs> that's the so, other thing these days. <laughs> talking about side projects, you all went off and did other things. Any plans for the resurrect funny money? Not at this point. The reason I put Funny Money to bed was it, it was half kicks and half my news. So um, people were hiring Funny Money in lieu of kicks. You know, kick was like the price tag was like 10, 20 times greater than Funny Money price tag. So well, let's just get Funny Money. It's the same damn thing without Brian or Ronnie. It wasn't the same damn thing, of course. But but I thought, you know, that's getting in the way of, of work for Kick. So I thought, um, we should put this down for a while. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Uh, you never say never. But it could come back. One of your other things that you've been up to over the years reading up your bag, you're, you're a vocal coach. I'm a vocal coach. Uh, what got you into that? Was it that you picked something back into the business? It's about the only thing I know how to do. I can sing, I, I'm a musician, I can write songs, I can play, I can perform. Outside of that, I'm pretty worthless. So I thought I might as well take all this knowledge and experience and share it with people. And I had to actually teach myself how to teach because what came naturally to me didn't seem easy to make somebody else understand. So it took me a while, but I've been going for 22 years now, and I've coached some really good artists, and I've coached some really crappy artists. <laughs> One really good artist. Well, we all know. Lizzie Hill. Yeah, she's my, she's my, Your my star pupil. My golden goose. What, what, was, <laughs> what, what, was, she, what was she like as a student to me? Was Lizzie she? was about 16 when she started with me, and she was a, she was an aspiring songwriter then. Very attentive, very knowledgeable in music, very dedicated. When she came in, when we did a lesson, we always recorded our lessons. And when she came in the next time, she knew that thing inside and out. It's like, okay, show me more. Okay, show me more. So she was just that passionate and dedicated. And she's, you know, unbelievably talented. Mm -hmm. And after I got done with her, her voice went from like this little mouse voice to this, you know, what it is now. And she's amazing. And she's a friend and, and we stay in touch and God bless her. She's, she, she's an inspiration to a lot of people. She is, a, she is indeed. But she's a female singer. Yes. Because it is hard for women to make in the world. It's still very much a male dominated business. She must be very proud of I'm uh, super proud of her. And, yeah. and what you've achieved by bringing her on. Yeah, yeah. I, I, like I say, I, I can't take the credit. She had all the talent. I just kind of steered her in the right direction. So she's she was amazing. You know, if everybody was as good as her, I'd be a genius. <laughs> you are a genius. No, no, that no. sounds like a good note to finish on. Yeah, but I stink. And I, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not on some elevation. Don't worry. <laughs> it's only YouTube. This is Monk from River Rock Television. Steve Whiteman from Kix. By the time you see this, they no doubt we'll will be home. Nottingham are new. Taking Nottingham to a new level. Spot the pun. Peace this is Monk. Keep her lit. Keep her between the hedges.